Okay guys, so I just recorded my Halloween haul number three and um, I'm, I'm gonna post that first I think before I post this video. I'm not even sure at this point if I will post it but I don't know. Um, If you are looking for anything Halloween related, the only thing that that is, is my background. Um, this video is just going to be kind of like why or what's been going on in my life, I guess you could say. Um, so we'll just see how it goes. Um, so growing up. It has always been my mom and I and my older brother and I do have um, other half related siblings and everything like that but this it's just been us three ever since I can remember ever since I was um, a toddler a baby pretty much anyways and so growing up like my mom she always um busted her ass pretty much just raising us and she would work multiple jobs at once just to be able to take care of us and she did a lot for us you know and that's where i learned my work ethic um that's where i learned how to be responsible how to be um hardworking, how to just keep working, never give up, how to show respect to people, um, how to stand up for what you believe in, how to pretty much everything. I mean, everything that I am today is because of her. And, um, and I don't want to get, I don't want to talk about all that because then it just makes it even worse and whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, growing up, of course, um, and I don't even know how to transition into this, and I just haven't thought of what I'm, what I was gonna say, but I just needed to get it off my chest. Um, so it's what September 2015. So spring of 2014, or I'm sorry, 2013. And I'm going to really try and hold my tears in because, because my cup says boo and I need to be happy. Or maybe it's like boo hoo. That's really depressing. Um, so about like March or April of 2013, my mom started having some trouble with her lungs. Um, she started coughing and she was coughing up blood and she wasn't really telling me um, because back to when I was a kid she was smoking and I always told her not to smoke. I would hide her cigarettes and I would tell her she needs to go outside, I would tell her to stop smoking, I would do PowerPoint presentations of what smoking does for your body. Like it was ridiculous how obsessed I was to get her to stop smoking when I was growing up. You know, and as I became a teenager, I just kind of, I kind of realized that she would have to stop if she wanted to. Um, anyways, and so she, so, okay, so she went to the doctor and they did some testing and um so anyway she went to the doctor and they diagnosed her with small cell lung cancer and for anyone who's dealt with any kind of lung cancer um in their family or known someone there's two different kinds there's non non-small cell lung cancer which um, 
there, if you catch it early enough, there for sure is a great outcome of not having that anymore. Um, with small cell, um, there's no cure for it. I mean, you're pretty much terminal. Um, and so she was diagnosed with lung cancer. And she, shortly after that, I mean, she started going through chemotherapy and radiation just one after the other, one after the other, and so on. I mean, it just all kind of happened so fast. And, um... And so, um, you know, down the road, her... Down the road, um, the cancer in her lungs actually, you know, they got control of it and pretty much there's just dead tissue there right now. You know, there hasn't been any active cancer. And like last year, there were a few times when she would go for her checkup and they would do her scans. She had a few spots on her brain, so it moved from her lungs to her brain. And pretty much with this, I mean, they could treat the spots but it's always going to come back somewhere somehow whether it be in your brain um, in your bones in your organs so on um, and so when it was on her brain I mean she started doing the cyber knife procedure which is um, where they actually do a mapping of your whole brain to see where that exact spot is and they measure it to a T and they just kind of use this laser radiation therapy to zone in on that spot. Um, and so she had that a few times. And I mean, it's been, she's been living for um, two years and some months, you know, and we didn't think that she would have this long. So of course we were very, and still are very grateful and appreciative, but, um, so anyways, so in August, she, so in August, she actually had an appointment scheduled and she started becoming more tired, which you could tell like it wasn't her and let me tell you I mean she she still worked through all of this stuff she still went to her job and kicked butt at life and you know she felt like something was going on but she didn't want to really face it I guess you could say and I remember her asking me, she's like, well, if I push my appointments and my scans off until the next month, which is September, do you think things can really um, progress fast? And I'm like, mom, I'm not a doctor. I mean, I think that you need to go because why wouldn't you go? But, and the reason that she didn't want to go is because they always told her, you know, after the number of cyber knife procedures that she had on her brain, they always told her, um, we can only treat it so many times, you know, if it happens to come back, we would need to talk about brain surgery. And that just freaked her out, and she's like, I can't do that, I'm not doing that, I'm 62 years old, I don't think I could go through that. And, and so like, in my mind, and in my heart, and in my world, I kind of just prepared myself. I kind of just prepared myself that, um, and I'm so sorry, I keep crying, like, just say it. So I don't want to make this video, so I do apologize. Um, I kind of just put it in my head and everything that, okay, well, if she's not going to have surgery, I mean, everything would just kind of start to go downhill and we would just um, kind of do what was necessary and what we needed to do to keep her comfortable. Um, so, 
I mean, at this point, she's still going to work and everything, and she's tired, and she can kind of feel that something's not right. Um, and then when we actually were out of town um, just last month, a few weeks ago, we got back into town late Sunday night, and Donnie actually went over there to go pick up um, Denali, one of our dogs, and also to mow her yard, um, just because she hasn't been able to kind of keep up on that stuff for a while so we just have always done it and we go over or Donnie goes over there and you know he just assumes that she's kind of sleeping um and she doesn't come to the door and then uh he's mowing or weed whacking by the window and you know he kind of sees her and she had fallen and so pretty much my mom she fell like that saturday afternoon and was a was unable to okay guys i don't know if this video is meant to be because it's coming it's becoming quite comical of how many times i have to record this oh my god and maybe that's a good thing because if i had to keep going through if i just went through from the beginning to the end i would be on the floor crying so I'm just gonna take this as a good as a good thing and so I don't even know at this point what it stopped at um, so pretty much she went to her oncologist to get her scans she doesn't have anything in her lungs still, which is great news. We're very appreciative for that. They're just worried about the spot on her brain. Um, the radiologist can't really tell if it's dead tissue or if it is cancer. Her oncologist thinks that it probably is cancer just because it's doubled in size and it's about four centimeters point something right now. So we tried to get in with the last neurosurgeon that she saw when we were kind of debating this before we even knew about the cyber knife procedure that they could do and it's been over a year so they now classify her as a new client and they didn't have an appointment until January and that made me so mad and so we called the next neurosurgeon that they actually scheduled with automatically um, we were just trying to get her in to see the other doctor just because she had seen him before but so with the new neurosurgeon that appointment was actually scheduled on the 22nd of this month and so we went to go see her oncologist just for a follow-up um, and that's when he told us that there's no other cancer anywhere in her body um, he was just worried about the spot on her brain, and he thinks that that's why she's having all these issues. And so he called because the 22nd was just too far off, he thought, which we were thinking the same thing. And so now they actually have um, her appointment scheduled Tuesday. And then they called her back and said, we have you scheduled for brain surgery on Friday. And my mom freaked out you know she's like I haven't even said yes I don't know what I'm doing you know and she's asking us what she should do and I mean they make it sound like if they do the surgery everything will be okay and that will just give her a better quality of life right now um, and there's no other cancer in her body so I would say why not but I know that she's scared and I'm not gonna I can't make her do anything that she doesn't want to do um, so I said well let's just keep that appointment we'll go talk to him Tuesday ask him all of your questions and if you are wanting to do it that way it's already scheduled and you're on his books so yeah so a week from yesterday my mom will be having brain surgery And she's just scared because she doesn't want anything bad to happen during surgery, which she, of course, has every right to be worried, but 
you know, you just gotta hope and think positive things. So yeah, it's just been really stressful. Um, you know, I'm trying to be there for her. I'm not letting her see that I'm sad and that I'm scared because I'm not in her shoes so I couldn't even imagine how scared and how sad she is. So I don't really, I'm not like when I feel sorry for myself, you know, I just when you try and act brave for someone else you kind of like start to hold everything in and you can't really express I guess how you're feeling because I don't talk to a lot of people about this just because I don't know it just makes me very sad and I start crying and I don't know so I just thought I would make this video and just let you guys know what's going on um, so yeah and I'll keep you guys updated um, for those of you that are interested in knowing how things go um, and if there's anyone who's dealt with any kind of situation like this or who's had cancer affect their life somehow, whether it be you yourself um, or a friend or family member that has been diagnosed, that just got diagnosed, or that you've lost, feel free to comment below and if you need to get anything off your chest, comment below and I will be listening and for anyone else who is going through a really hard time in life right now I hope that you continue to be strong and continue to be brave and just continue to work through it um, you know my mom she would always say we just gotta get through this and it'll be fine and you know, it's like, Mom, you've been saying that for how long? And we're always working through something. And, and she's like, yeah, but... She's like, it makes you appreciate those moments in life when you really don't have that much to worry about, which isn't often for us, but it makes those moments even more greater. So just hang in there, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you for watching this video and I'm sorry if this was kind of a depressing video um, but hopefully me just talking about this and getting it out there will help someone else to cope with whatever they may be going through and to help me cope as well. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.